Hi, Andy here in Business Development with Mortgage Heroes. Part of what I have to do here at Mortgage Heroes for business development is just watch the overall marketplace and look for trends, watch analysis, and identify areas of opportunity for our current borrowers as well as our past clients. So in this video, I'm gonna talk for just a minute about what are some of the things that happened in the first half of 2019, some that were expected and actually some that weren't. Now in the beginning of the year, as most years do, the year starts off a little bit slow. People are thawing out, yes, even here in Southern California, people get the winter cold and they start thawing out and they get back into the regular mode of going to work and taking kids to school and looking for a home. Now, around the holidays, it's usually a really good time to buy homes, but for whatever reason, we tend to see a little bit of a change in that around here. And things really started to pick up once again, right when we got to like March, April, May. The beginning of the year though, what was interesting is that the Fed came out and said they were kind of gonna take a wait and see approach to the economy. Now, those of you who have been watching us know this already, those of you who are just joining us, uh, the, the Fed's job is not to control the rate market for the mortgage industry. Their job is to control the short-term rate market. And the short-term rate market are for rates such as credit cards, car loans, lines of credit, things like that. However, their sentiment and their comments and feedback about their opinion on the state of the economy weighs heavily into the minds of mortgage-backed security investors. Those investors end up putting money into mortgage-backed securities and that pool of funds is what creates mortgage money in the marketplace for people like you and me. So when the Federal Reserve says they're gonna take a wait and see approach, what that really means is they're looking for economic indicators to clue them in on which way the economy is going. Is it growing? Is it contracting? Are there problems on the horizon? One of the things that was unexpected this, this year that kind of has started happening is that there's, there's pressures that maybe they didn't see coming that are affecting the conversation they're having. Uh, one of those pressures is economic sanctions that are being put uh, because of tax tariffs uh, overseas. That's actually putting pressure on the companies here in the United States that operate globally because now they have an issue that they're borrowing the, the short-term money here, but then they're getting tariffed and taxed <laughs> on this side of the deal. And it's, having the, it's, it's making the Fed kind of take a to step back and look at how are these decisions being made from the White House affecting the monetary policy decisions they have to make. Now, technically speaking, the White House should have no influence on the Federal Reserve. They are to remain completely independent as to not be influenced or persuaded by the White House. Now, let's face some facts. We know that coming up in 2020, it's an election year. We also know that we have the tariffs and economic sanctions going on with other countries, and we have this trade war going on. Now, all of that kind of getting thrown into the pot with looking at economic information and how it would indicate the market's getting better or worse makes it a very difficult decision and very difficult to kind of predict what's happening in the market for the Fed. So what we thought was gonna happen in the beginning of the year was they're gonna wait and see. And because the market was looking good and the economy was looking good, they thought, oh, maybe we'll raise rates once or twice in 2019. Well, we got to the middle of spring and actually they had to just kind of pause and hold their position and not raise rates and not lower them. Now, if you've been watching the news recently, in the last couple of weeks, you've noticed they may actually revert their decision and drop rates in order to stimulate the economy because them raising and holding has actually not had the positive uh, outcome and effect that they were hoping for. So this is the really interesting part. We thought that 2019 was gonna be the year where things are gonna kind of stabilize and we're gonna see the Fed kind of hold their ground and then to prevent inflation from going crazy, they're gonna raise rates a little bit. They actually had to stop that altogether. Now that was great for those of you who were looking to refinance. Again, the Fed didn't set that rate, but because they said we're gonna hold or we might even cut, that actually means a lot of good savings for those of you looking to refinance and save on your monthly cost because the mortgage market has stayed low and in your favor. 
If we're still sitting around here seeing rates at three and a half and three and a quarter, then that is in your favor for sure. And that is something that you need to be looking at and taking in consideration when it comes down to how you finance your home. So all that is to say that those of you who took advantage of the rate market, you're in great shape because rates are low now and they'll probably continue to stay low through 2019. That is my prediction looking at all the things that are happening. Uh, some of those things are economic sanctions, the, the ta like the taxes and tariffs going on with uh, other countries. We have, uh, we're in a, politi a heavy political climate that is very much about the next election and no one wants to rock the boat during that season. And uh, I think that the Fed Reserve is probably gonna end up reducing their short-term loan rate uh, at least once this year, possibly twice, depending on how bad uh, economic indicators are for United States companies. So that's my prediction. The first half of the year was a little bit of a wild one. Uh, some of the things that happened were, were not as expected. And uh, honestly, that actually turned out to be in our favor as a business who helps you guys in saving money. Uh, that's helped us a lot and it's actually helped bring more people into the housing market. The months of April, May, and June were very, very busy and the business had a lot of volume. And that was a lot to do with how well people felt about the economy and how good they felt about their opportunity to achieve home ownership or to save money and do cash out, do a rate and term refinance, VA Earl, FHA Streamline, remove mortgage insurance, whatever those reasons were. So uh, the first half of the year uh, recap is, is really just about two things. Uh, the Federal Reserve and uh, rates remaining low and in the favor of homeowners or aspiring homeowners. So we'll see what the second half has to bring. Uh, that's it for now. If you have any questions pertaining to the market, uh, anything specific about what I mentioned in this video that you wanted to discuss with me or the team here at the office, go ahead and leave us a message, write a comment, or reach us directly. We'd be happy to talk to you about any of these things, expand on them, or even field your questions and help you understand them greater. We'll see you next month. Thanks.